Hey guys, it's Randy Klemick. Going fishing at the Bass Lake. It takes about 20 minutes, like a mile hike through this beautiful woods. Got my bass fishing pole here. And I had this huge prey fish on because it's a rocky place. So we'll give it a try, see how it goes. Just made it up to the lake and I'm about to get down there and try to catch us a nice bass. I forget who makes it, but it's got like a coffee scent. It's got just a huge hook uh, with a little, little weight over here. And you can see this real rocky, this place, a lot of crawfish living in here. So I'm gonna toss it in and see what happens. I like this point over here, so I'm gonna, I'm moving my spot. I'm gonna try this point. Remember I came here with my dad once and my dog. It's a big black lab. And my dad like foul hooked this bass and he threw it to the dog and the dog ate the whole thing. It's really crazy. All right, this is what we're talking about right here. Look at this nice big, big bass. Got him on the, the crawfish. Got him hooked really nice. Here's the crawdad. Uh, it's a beautiful bass. He's right off of these rocks. And this is what we're looking for, baby. Let's get a picture with the old man with him. That's what we're looking for right there. It's really nice fish. Been fishing under these rocks with the crawfish, and uh, they just love it. They love it. Let's revive him a little. I mean, he's only been out of the water for like two seconds, so he's just gonna go right back in. Let's see if we can get an underwater shot of him. While we're waiting for the next bass to strike, I figured I'd show you the type of lures that I bring out. Um, by the way, I'm in northern New Jersey. And I'm the only one at this lake. Uh, people in New Jersey, they don't really like the outdoors. So that's apparent. Because every time I come here, there's like one guy or no guys. Usually I'm the only one. Um, this is what I bring. Uh, I got my rubber worms box. I mean, this is just for my backpack. So if I'm on my boat or like going close to shore off my car I just bring a big tackle box but I got these crawdads I forget the brand but they're like coffee scented and they come in a yellow and uh, red bag and they're great I got like pumpkin seed ones pumpkin pumpkin with some kind of flake black and red flakes I got your standard like this is a great worm you can get this at Walmart. It's like a Strike King. I don't know. Whatever color this is, they love it. These are like Senko worms, obviously. Fish like those. But then I got this box, which is more like my experimental box. And I like throwing like huge spinners out. Um, and my frog, this floating frog. This is really a cool lower when a bass goes for this. You know it because it floats. And then you're like, uh, you know, top water stuff. And I, I love MEP Spinner, so I got this like huge double MEPS Black Fury. There's pickerel in here, like big ones. So pickerel, they like stuff like this. Maybe if there was like a muskie, he would like this too, but I don't think there's muskies in here. And then your standard like Rapala's can't go wrong there I mean it's just like classic lures you know these are from I've had them from when I was a kid uh, same with this rebel crawfish love it then I got like little boxes that I put in my front pouches different smaller Rapalas you know usually I work from like big biggest stuff I've got down to the smallest stuff I don't know why but that's I'm just like bigger fish like bigger baits you know 
different more spinners um my weights i got weights i got all kinds of hooks like offset hooks i like straight straight shank hooks like no no bends in the hooks i got those in here i got all kinds of hooks i don't know why i have so many you know normally you need like one or two um but you know it's about experimentation and just having fun actually uh my nephew scotty taught me how to use this type of pole about i don't know not that long ago i've been fishing for 30 something years and i just learned how to use this type of bait casting reel uh like a year and a half ago when my nephew taught me and he's like 15 and he's a great fisherman and he showed me how to do it and ever since then i've loved i've loved using this type of pole it's got a great spine for setting the hook uh the reel reels really fast and it's yeah real smooth so it's awesome it's not a huge one but it's a nice bass just bear with me buddy take two seconds this guy we're gonna try to get a picture of him underwater let's see if we can do got about I got to make it all the way down there and then I got about a mile walk so it's nice to always fish your way down the shore uh, this spot's been great I got three bass oh look at this this is the uh, rescue helicopter coming out of Vernon New Jersey and they are rescuing somebody who's been in an accident and they're flying them to the hospital that's what that helicopter's for so let's just pray for that person whatever's happening with them that they're okay tonight all right haven't even walked 10 yards and just got a really nice another nice really bass so this is great um hold on one second i'm gonna try to let him go in the water i really want to get an underwater shot of this guy swimming away you know i've been trying to do this but it's just not working out so it's real rocky here. The second I put him in the water, he's gonna just jump out. Yeah, this spot is like when you're fishing off your bass boat in a deep spot, just dropping it straight down. These rocks and these cliffs just go straight down here. So it's a great spot to just really fish close to shore. Um, it's probably about 10 to 15 feet deep right under my feet here so very nice is this fishing or rock climbing no, i don't know i don't know it's a little bit of both it's like rock climbing and fishing and bushwhacking just gotta get up over here When my daughter Kylie was two, I used to bring her up here and we used to sit on this rock and bass fish together. It's a great spot. Had a little fire pit here and we'd sit up here and look out at the lake. Beautiful. This right here is a rock elm. Look at this beautiful tree. This is the type of tree that can grow in between rocks. That's why it's called a rock elm tree. And this is a really old one right here to be having a trunk this big. Um, it's a little early for its leaves to be turning. It's only the end of July. This is what's called the talus slope. You can see the rocks going all the way up the mountain. They come down here. Um, Get up Talus Slope. It's a place where it used to have a rock cliff, and over the ages it's just broken off into smaller rocks coming down the slope of the mountain. I don't even know if you guys can see that. That's a really nice one. 
Oh, I'm excited about that baby. A very, very nice bass. So, this is number five for today. Let's see if we can let it go. Let's let this beautiful bass go. All right, guys, look at this lure. It's ripped open. It's a crawdad with only one claw left on it. Uh, you know what that means? That means it was a good day of fishing. Thanks, guys. See you next time. This has been bass fishing. It's been awesome on a Friday night. And looking forward to the next time that we can be together. See you soon. Randy's Rock. That's what we call this landmark, Randy's Rock. Because if you go that way, you go to the next ridge and you'll hit another trail.